morning dear students today we are going to continue the remaining portion of the chapter transcription in the last class we have finished uh, about the modification that is happening to a, a mature mrna mature mrna means uh, the mrna that is just only transcribed from the uh, mdna okay in this section we are going to see rna splicing uh, specifically mrna splicing Splicing means removal, removal of what? Removal of unwanted portions, unwanted sequence that is called introns from the pre-mRNA. Uh, for a definition, in what we can give RNA splicing, uh, its definition is simply the removal of intervening sequence or intron from the pre-mRNA. I will show you a picture. This is the picture of a uh, premature mRNA and in this picture you can see some blue portions. These blue portions indicates the unwanted or intervening sequence. They are called the introns. And each this sequence have 5 dash and 3 dash end. And for removing this uh, first an incision a cut need to be made uh, at both ends. And these sequences are removing. After removing the sequence, the other remaining portions are covalently ligated. And uh, important thing is that that splicing it should be very correct and accurate. If mistakenly at least one base is deleted or misplaced, it will affect the mature mRNA. Its translation sometimes the mRNA totally uh, may not get translated if any mistake. Uh, happen during this splicing so it should be that much accurate okay and this is a picture of mRNA mature mRNA and this mature mRNA we couldn't see any uh, blue portion that means any introns is with only with the, uh, that untranslated regions and protein coding sequence untranslated sequence means 5 dash and there is a cap and 3 dash and there is a only a T. Okay. Next is recognition of splice sites. How the splice sites are recognizing? Because of the presence of exonic splicing enhancer. Now in this picture, uh, you can see that exonic splicing enhancer. They are specific sequence. Uh, the sequence that is usually present in exon portion itself. Okay. And its sequence is very uh, significant. Any alteration or change in the sequence may lead to uh, the incorporation of a, of bases of intron or uh, excision or splicing out of uh, bases of exons. Both leads to deleterious effect. So that much important is exonic splicing enhancer. Next, I am going to tell you about some type of introns. That is group 2 introns. What is its speciality? They can splice themselves. They have the self splicing property. And these group 2 introns are usually found in fungal mitochondria, uh, then plant chloroplast, and in a wide variety of bacteria. How they do this self splicing? Through a lariate formation. What is this uh, lariate? Lariate means uh, they are some trap like trap like structures usually used by cowboys to uh, catch the runaway cows. So it, it is such a, a structure. Okay, and uh, by forming by forming such a lariate like structure, uh, the group two introns carrying out splicing. How this lariate is forming? Um, by this group 2 introns that we are going to see. This is a mRNA and in this mRNA we can see introns and these uh, blue portions are exons. Okay and uh, and also along with that you need to understand that each exon and intron has 5 dash and 3 dash Yes, uh, for this exons, it is the 5 dash n and this is the 3 dash n. 
for this intron again this is the 5 dash end and this is the 3 dash end for this exon this is 5 uh, dash end and 3 dash this intron 5 dash end and 3 uh, dash end okay in this way it's uh, ends so next we are going to see what is happening to this mrna first is plight uh, sorry uh, a uh, cut splicing is happening uh, in the 5 dash region of this uh, intron any of the introns and it moves apart okay and then this intron form this end forms the lariate how that lariate is forming i will show you that in this way it curved and bend around and form this lariate. How uh, the lariate is holding position? Through a covalent bond. Covalent bond between uh, an adenine base that is present almost near to the 3 dash end of the nearby exon. And after that, uh, the 5 dash end of this intron also get spliced out and later the intron is released from the mRNA. In this way all other introns also separate and the remaining exons uh, get uh, joined together, ligated together and form the mature mRNA. Okay, next is splicing in animals. In animals, how the splicing is taking place? Uh, the process is almost similar to uh, the same method that is undertaken by group 2 introns. But the only difference is that uh, the in animal cells, uh, this introns cannot splice by itself. It requires some other um, agent, some enzyme, some RNAs. That group of RNAs are called small nuclear RNAs. Or other ways we have learned it, learned about it in the former chapter, former sections of this chapter itself. There are other ways called ESN RNAs, small nucleolar RNAs. And that difference we are going to see uh, who is helping. Who is helping means a small nucleolar RNAs. This is a premature mRNA or hnRNA and uh, what is happening uh, we need to remove this introns and uh, it cannot undertake its own splicing it needs some uh, enzymes enzymes specifically small nucleolar RNAs uh, they are an assemblage of certain RNAs associated with the different proteins and as a whole that uh, gathering, that assembling uh, of RNAs, small nucleolar RNAs and uh, proteins, uh, they are known as spliceosome, it's a machinery. It is carrying out the splicing out of the introns out of the uh, premature mRNA to create mature mRNA. In the other intron also, other spliceosome have assembled and then create the mature mRNA by ligating together the uh, exons by uh, removing all introns. Okay. Next, I am going to explain uh, the detailed process of splicing and which are the uh, enzymes. Enzymes means uh, yes and RNPs involved in splicing. All those things I am going to explain now in uh, in this uh, point. This is uh, the premature pre-mRNA is with the exons and introns. These introns we need to excise out. And for that uh, we have learned in the former slide that need to organize a spliceosome. As part of that, the first RNP, small nuclear RNA with the protein, that is U1 ESN RNP. Uh, that means it is an RNA and it is uh, having 
uh, and as some association with the certain proteins. So that is why that RNA is uh, called the U1 SN RNP. First, it command join in the 5 dash end of the intron that need to be excised out. How it join with that intron? Uh, there is one uh, peculiarity. The sequence of this RNA is complementary with the sequence of this intron in its 5 dash end. 5 dash end. The sequence is complementary with the uh, sequence of this U1 SN RNA. By that way, it form, uh, it combine with or uh, it uh, join with that 5 dash end of that intro. Okay. Next, uh, what happened? Next came another protein called U2AF. It came and it first bind a pyrimidine rich region of this intro towards the 3 dash end. Okay. Where it binds, where it interacts, interacts in a pyrimidine rich uh, area almost near to the 3 dash end. And along with that interact with another protein. That protein is called ES. R protein. Where we can find that protein? That protein is C associated with the exon splicing enhancer. It's a particular sequence that we, we have already understood. And that sequence is seen in this exon region. Okay. So, uh, this protein come by, uh, come and bind the intro towards the 3 dash end uh, first it interacts with the pyrimidine rich area and also it interacts with the SR protein that is associated with the exon uh, spli spli splicing enhancer sequence of the exon ok only this much two uh, important factors U1 SN, SN RNB command by and um, another Protein. What is his name? Uh, U2AF. These two uh, come and buy and interact. Now, what is the role of this U2AF protein? Why it came there? Because it is a protein responsible to recruit another SNRNP called U2 SNRNP. It then come and buy towards the 3 dash. And, and 3 dash end uh, and also the region where it bind to the intro is the point uh, is the point of branching branching for what branching to form a lariate lariate I already explained to you in the case of group 2 intros so uh, I, at the site of lariate formation, there is an adenine. So, uh, this U2 is an RNP command by in that region, in that region of the intron towards the 3 dash end. And as a result of this binding, uh, at the site of that Adenines, adenosine residue, a bulging happen. Bulging means to form a lariate. Okay, that I will show you. Okay, this is the bulging happens. This bulging happen only after the recruitment of U2 SNRP. And this is the branching point to form the lariate. Okay. Next, even then, uh, much more SNP SN RNB need to come and join with this um, splice you also. Join with this SN RNB to form the uh, organized splice you so. That we are going to see what uh, yet to come and to join with this splice you so. Then came a pair of SNRNP that is U4 SNRNP and U6 SNRNP. 
they both uh, as a pair they approach and bind along with this other S and R and P to the 5 dash end of this intro. And after this binding, uh, I told you that uh, these two S and R and P came as a pair. That means they, uh, they exist in pair because of uh, the base pairing between them. Okay. Uh, after command bind to this position towards the 5 dash end, what next happened? Uh, this U4 SNR and the strip off, strip away from the site intro. Okay. And after it stripped off, what next happened? That U1 SNR and we also stripped off. Then what only left there? Uh, that U6 SNRNP and U2 SNRNP uh, remains there and that U6 it's uh, one end for a uh, base space with uh, one end of U2 SNRNP base space. Okay. And the other end binds with, binds with the 5 dash end of the intro. Okay, everything well set and uh, this U4 SN RNB itself is a ribozyme, ribo, ribozyme RNA acting as enzyme, ribozyme and uh, U4 that we have seen just before that is just stripped off from here. It acts as an inhibitor of for this U6 as it's stripped off. Its catalytic power gets uh, activated. And as a result, what happens? Mm, as a result, the first cleavage happens. Cleavage happens towards the 5 uh, dash n, 5 dash end of the intron. Okay, 5 dash n, the cleavage happens. And as a result, what, uh, what form? Uh, this end is free, freed from the rest of the free EMRNA. Okay, then uh, we need to understand what are the products formed as a result of first cleavage. Towards the 5 dash end of this intron, there is a free 5 dash exon. Why, why it is called as free 5 dash exon? Because this exon is seen towards the 5 dash end of this uh, inron that is in, uh, in the process of being splicing out. Okay. So, one end, what, what is present? A free 5 dash exon. And other half, what left? Uh, other half, uh, it is a Lariate intron three dash exon in the mediate. Okay, this is the Lariate intron three dash Lariate intron. It's towards its uh, three dash end, through three dash end, uh, what um, present exon. So, this part is called the lariate in drone three dash exon intermediate, and the other one free five dash exon. Next, we need to access this portion, okay? For that, um, another, another SN RNA is called U5 SN RNA. It came and because of its presence or presence also, uh, this exon is kept in position. Okay, exon is kept in its position uh, because of uh, because of the presence of U5 SN RNA. Okay, then uh, as U5 SN RNA also assembled, then what next results? Uh, the excision at the 3 dash end also splicing of the 3 dash end also 
happens here here a another splicing i will show you that that splicing happen and what uh, can result out of this uh, excision or splicing uh, as a result a uh, we can see a free exon and another uh, free exon and free exon and the what um, uh, what remains uh, there um, what is the what left as a part of the uh, part of that uh, pre mrna because uh, it may contain some other introns also uh, as it go as it runs runs down that also need to be spliced out by the same process okay. so after that this intron is totally uh, spliced out from this premature sorry pre mr in, in the same method other introns are also simultaneously uh, spliced out and as a result mature mrna is forming it is with an organization of only exons exons okay this is the detail aspect details of splicing okay also one more thing after splicing out the intron completely uh, again uh, all the uh, snrnb are released all the snrbs are released out from that splicing site and they again get associated with its corresponding proteins to form to organize another splice you soon in another splicing site okay next is about certain types of proteins uh, proteins means i already told you that uh, the, that sn rna is seen associated with a certain set of proteins that is helping this rnas in uh, splicing the introns so among those proteins the common uh, major type of protein is sm protein and it is common in almost all sn rnp and this sm protein binds with the sn rnp and form the core of the main part of the sn rnp and along with this sm protein this sn rna contain other proteins also but those proteins are unique to each type of sn rnp only common protein is sm protein okay all this can be assessed uh, one mark or two mark question next rna helicases helicases means these are enzymes that is catalyzing the uncoiling of the uh, strands then what is the role of this rna helicases in splicing we have seen that uh, during the splicing while explaining the detailed aspect of splicing i have uh, uh, told you that uh, two snr rnp your snrp means uh, u4 sn rnp and uh, u6 sn rnp both these came as base and they are uh, held each other they are um, base pair they are they come as pair uh, because of base pairing between them so during the splicing process uh, this u6 sn rnp need to uh, release or uncoil this u4 sn rnp for that purpose which enzyme is serving this rna helicase is helping for that so that is one role and also in the beginning of this spl um, uh, splicing process i have told you about one type of protein called u2 uh, a f protein and uh, that protein itself is recruiting that uh, u2 sn rn p to the splice site results in the bulging of that uh, intron so for uh, after uh, recruiting that sn u2 sn rnp to the site that u2 af also need to release from the u2 sn rnp for that purpose also uh, who is um, working this rna helicases itself working there okay that's the role of rna helicases in uh, intron splicing next uh, uh, role of snrna proteins next point 
uh, what is the role exact role what are the different function they are uh, performing this snrmb rna and protein together maintain the proper three dimensional structure of that snrna uh, that means that proteins mainly help to maintain the three dimensional structure of that snrna and also both uh, drives both means specifically we are mentioning here what is the importance of this proteins to that snrna that's uh, we need to understand uh, first, this protein helps to maintain its three-dimensional structure. Second uh, importance, this protein make required changes in the conformation of that snRNA. Only then it can transport the splice mRNA towards the nuclear envelope to export it to outside the nucleus. Clear? Uh, uh, once more I will explain um, that uh, protein will create some changes in the snRNA due to that changes due to that changes it can uh, carry carry the uh, spliced mature uh, mRNA mRNA towards the nuclear envelope to export it to outside uh, that is another importance and uh, next importance is uh, this Protein system helping RNA to locate the splice sites. It's important. Then we have heard about some other proteins called the SR proteins. SR proteins, uh, it is seen um, binding with the exonic splicing enhancer. Exonic splicing enhancer, it is uh, a sequence seen inside the exon. Sorry, exon itself. And to this sequence bind this SRP, sorry, SR protein. Uh, it form an interconnecting network uh, uh, and the margin of intron exon. It form interconnecting network in which, in which place intron exon junction. Oh, okay, uh, by that way, that spliceosome can easily locate the intro. And uh, uh, and also, the, why this is called SR protein? SR protein is protein. We know uh, it is formed of uh, uh, union of may, and many amino acids. In this SR protein, uh, the amino acids serine and uh, arginine, arginine, this uh, dipeptide as two amino acid join then it become dipeptide this dipeptide's number is more so that is why this SR protein uh, get that name okay and it is positively charged now, as it is positively charged at the time of transcription itself it binds with the carboxyl terminal domain of that polymer RNA polymerase in C. So that means whenever an intron is added, the moment itself, uh, it can bind that intron exon junction to recruit the essential um, yeah, SNRNP RNP to that junction to uh, uh, carry out that splicing process. Okay, with this we can finish today's class and section. Thank you.